When I first opened this new box with watercolors, I felt everything about them was a little different than I expected and what I'm used to from regular Western watercolors that I tend to use in my paintings. But once I started to paint, I quickly realized that different material doesn't necessarily mean worse, just with another set of properties that you can either dismiss or use them to create a completely different piece. I also have been in a very bad place regarding my inspiration for the past three weeks and this was the first really fun and enjoyable painting experience that I've had so let me tell you all about it and show you the gorgeous watercolor set I received for testing This set was sent to me by Paul Rubens Art Supplies and I appreciate that this has already been a second set they asked me to try. That being said, the video is not sponsored. I do not agree to test everything that I get offered because of the schedule that's crazy this year, but when this email arrived and I saw the packaging, I just couldn't resist. I have to admit that I love beautiful packaging and there is something about new paints that makes me feel inspired and more motivated to try out new things. So this is a classical art set containing Chinese pigment colors. Set contains 24 vibrant colors in individual tubes. Due to lack of English descriptions here, I wasn't able to write down individual color names. And there is also no pigment information nor light fastness rating. So take my video more of a first impressions rather than a thorough review. Besides, some artists are great at comparing and remembering pigment properties and very extensive extensive research about each paint they use and I deeply admired that. One of them is Kimberly Creed who tested this and other Paul Rubens art supplies in amazingly great detail and you can check her swatches and even light fastness tests on her website. I will link her channel and her review of these down below in case that you desire more information. I personally work in different way. I do a lot of studies this year and I try to push my limits, figure out new approach to my paintings and so I jumped right into it with these paints as soon as I opened them. The moment I pressed the paint to my palette, I realized that these are not traditional gamma arabic watercolors that I'm used to. Those are often referred as western watercolors. You know, they're transparent, my process is kind of accustomed to them. And gamma arabic doesn't have any odors. So regular watercolors usually don't smell and these do, the odor is very noticeable. The paints use different binder or maybe set of binders and reminded me of Ganzai Tambi paints more than a regular watercolor colors but those I only know from pants they never smelled and when I left these paints to dry on my palette the smell had disappeared so it's present during their wet state when you press them out of the tube before I paint with a new palette, at least I do swatches to see what I'm working with and how transparent they get. The consistency of the paints surprised me also. It was very different. Some colors were more creamy and others leaked way too much. This really doesn't bother me all that much. It doesn't affect my painting process, but it would make it more difficult to paint with them outdoors. However, for a planner painting, you wouldn't pick a tube set anyway. So let's talk about the biggest pro of this set and in my opinion that is color vibrancy. Especially those reds were just gorgeous and that made me want to paint with red and use all of those hues in my painting. The color itself did not disappoint me even after it dried. However, I cannot recommend it for pieces that you would want to last for a long time because I don't know the light fastness of these and I would have to perform a light fastness test which takes about half a year. You can notice as I swatch the paints that they tend to be more opaque than transparent and as they dry on my palette during the night they cracked a lot. This was a hint that I'm dealing with some kind of hybrid paint. They feel more like a gouache than watercolors but they are perfectly water soluble and the re-wetting them next morning was very easy. If you ever tried comparing gouache and watercolors, watercolors tend to flow a lot when you place them inside a wet wash and their main property is transparency. They create 
create beautiful crease part edges and the washes glow on your paper. Wash on the other hand doesn't flow as much but you can still use it in a transparent wash. As well as a thick paint it has good opacity and that allows you to build the painting from thinner to thicker application. So you can easily correct mistakes by covering them and have a lovely matte finish. I googled watercolor paint and it seems like watercolor might be a much broader term than how I understand it and any water soluble media and by this standard this set would definitely fit in. I think what's important for you to know when introducing this set to you is that you will not be able to get the same performance as from the western type of watercolor but you'll be able to use them in a different way that can also benefit your painting. For me learning this was a very new experience. As eager as I was to try them in a painting, I had to wait until the other day to sketch it properly and have enough time to finish it. I quickly sketched a rough idea of the portrait surrounded with red flowers and I sketched with a red polychromos pencil. I didn't care much for having a light sketch because the paints are opaque so I think that if you work with a very light sketch you would lose it quickly. Instead polychromos colored pencils stay on your paper for a very long time. You don't need to refresh your sketch because of the oily composition component of that pencil that repels water and therefore stays visible. The paints are really not as flowy as western watercolors. Inside a wet wash they create blended look but they more or less stay where you place them. This actually made it easier to keep the redder skin tone around the cheeks and nose, greyish tone around the chin and ochre on her forehead. All in all, <laughs> it felt like I'm in control much more than normally. I feel sometimes pressured into stating whether paints are good or bad during a review. Maybe because people need a quick tip on what to buy, but unless you pay attention to the actual attributes and consider whether they work for your style of painting, then you might be deeply dissatisfied even with the high-end watercolors. I really don't know the techniques that artists use with traditional Chinese pigments, but my understanding is that these were not developed for the purpose of glazing techniques or the techniques that I normally use but they ended up on my table so I tried to see how they fit into my style of painting. I think it's beneficial to talk about differences in art materials because you can then better understand why you achieve different results than tutorials that you watch. With the type of paints like these, you actually might have troubles achieving certain effects that are typical for regular like Western watercolor. And I made an entire class on Skillshare to explain and show watercolor effects and I would link it down below. Salt effect is a good way to test if you're dealing with more opaque and less flowy watercolors because Usually with these, the salt doesn't react all that well. Watercolor blooms that are typical for Western watercolors as well are also really hard to create using these. I think because of the binder and the more heavy particles that make them simply stay put. I personally love effects and use them a lot in my paintings, but if I decide not to rely on them that much, these paints are excellent for my practice. They might be a perfect transition to gouache that I want to actually take next year. Not that I would stop doing my regular watercolor work, but in addition, I want to learn gouache. Another example of who these paints might be great for is someone who likes more control over their paints and tend not to use water that much anyway. I can imagine that these could be great for precise and detailed illustrations. Personally, I would recommend to use them as a practice tool to develop your skills, exercise quick studies and visual ideas, ideally in a sketchbook. And I think even a lower weight of your paper might be okay with these studies since you don't need tons of water.
One thing I don't like to compromise on is color saturation when choosing paint for practice, but with this you don't have to. The final piece was beautifully vibrant and if I have something close to compare it with, I would compare that with the piece that I created using Gansai Tambi paints just because those paints feel the closest that I've ever tested or tried to these paints and that piece really showed muted colors the minute it dried and it, I felt a little sad because the piece was one that really made me proud this year. Let's sum up what I've learned about these paints, who I feel could benefit from such set and practical tips on using them daily in your studio. If you're looking to invest in typical Western watercolors and like to work in multiple transparent layers and utilize watercolor effects such as salt and blooms, these are not the kind of paints that will fulfill your expectations. These are traditional Chinese pigment paints that are designed to be used more opaquely in one or just a handful of layers and would suit painters who want to experience have more control over their paint and even for those creating vibrant illustrations. They will also help you if you want to make a transition from watercolor to gouache as their properties favor the techniques that count on a thicker application of paint. Twenty-four colors provide great variety of color hues, and the set even contains white pigment that can work opaquely, similar to white gouache. And therefore, you don't need to buy a separate tube if you want to do the highlights and tiny white details on top. This paint can handle sufficient coverage of white. Paints are very comfortable to work with. Mostly have buttery texture and matte finish, even if you re-wet them. When they dry on your palette, they crack, similarly to how gouache does. That doesn't make them faulty. You can very easily re-wet them at any point and continue working. I re-wetted them three times over the course of three days when I was working on this painting and they were always ready to be used again instantly, even more quickly than my regular watercolors. Some things to keep in mind for those sensitive to smells, these paints have a bad odor when you first pour them out of the tube, but the odor disappears when they dry. Since manufacturer doesn't disclose pigment and light fastness information or very vaguely, I would recommend for these to be used for practice and in your sketchbook. Price range is in my opinion very affordable. The entire set costs about 49 euros, making each tube be worth about 2 euros. A set is also beautifully packaged, just gorgeous and can make a very impressive gift. Let me know your own experiences if you've tried this set yourself or if you have experience with similar types of watercolor paints, it will definitely help the community. And I will see you in the next video.